Hi everyone, Vincenzo here with a new ukulele tutorial. This week, let's work on improvisation. This is the ninth lesson of a 10 lesson series designed to take your playing to the next level. Improvisation is one of the most discussed topics among ukulele players who have been playing for a while and are looking for new challenges. At the same time, it is also a bit of a dreaded topic by some, as there is a tendency to believe that improvisation is very difficult. Today, I will give you all the tools that you need to get started with improvisation, and you will see that it's easier than you think. Anyway, enough with the talking and let's get started. A few lessons ago, you learned about the minor pentatonic scale. This scale is really great for improvising and it's going to be your starting point of today. You're going to be using the D minor pentatonic scale in position 1. Very easy, let me play it for you. Three, four. But I'm sure you're still thinking, okay, I know the scale, but how do I use it to actually improvise? Do I just play random notes? Well, that could potentially work, but let me show you a proven method that works much better. This method has been used by the best musicians, people like Miles Davis, Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy Page and the list goes on. It's called question and answer. Let's dive deeper into it because I believe this is going to make improvising much easier for you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are things going? Everything's going very well. So exactly like in this simple conversation, you will play a question then you play an answer, then again the question, which for now can be exactly the same as before, and then you give another answer. Sometimes the second answer is a bit more elaborated. Now, let me show you how to put this into action. But before I start, a super important piece of advice for you. Like in a real conversation, it's important to leave gaps. So don't overplay. The first thing to do is come up with a question which is perhaps the most challenging part. Your question is going to be based on the D minor pentatonic scale. One important thing to mention is that when you improvise for the first time, you don't have to do everything on the spot. That would be an unrealistic expectation. Instead, you're going to work out a question to use beforehand. So you can play the scale simply as it is, Then you can try a few notes combinations, for example, or maybe this. Basically, keep playing until you find something that you like, and then polish it. By the way, you can also have melodies if that works well for you. Anyway, I like this idea, so I kept working on it a bit more, and I came up with this. I've just started one extra note at the end and I changed the rhythm. So this is going to be the question. One more time. Three, four, one. For today, you're improvising over one chord, D minor. My backing track is in fact a D minor vamp in a laid back funky style. Now, let me play the question again, but this time over the backing track. Space for the answer. Question again. And space for more improvisation. Now, let's use this question to develop an eight measure solo, meaning you're gonna follow the question and answer structure four times. I will teach you my answers so that you have some material to help you come up with your own ones later on. But first, let's learn the question properly. So you have fret number two on the third string, hammer on to fret number five, then three, back to five with a bit of vibrato, and then you end on fret number two. Everything together, three, four, one, This lick starts on beat two. So it goes one, two, three, four, one, and you start playing. One more time, three, four, one. 
Now let's start working on the first answer. For the first answer, I'm gonna keep it very simple and I only wanna use these two notes. That's all. One thing that works very well is to start on the off beat. So I'm gonna start on the off beat with the fifth fret, the last note of D minor pentatonic scale in position one. And then I simply alternate between three and five twice. To make it a bit more interesting, I'm gonna slide to the first five and I will add a bit of vibrato to the last one. So you have slide to five, three, five, three and five with a bit of vibrato. All together, three and four and one. Again, three and four and one. Now let's put together question and answer. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, let's work on the second answer. Here I want to play something a bit more elaborated. So I will start with the same two notes as before, but this time I want to have a bit of a jump in the melody. Before, I only played adjacent notes, you know, notes that are next to each other in the minor pentatonic. This time, I want to have a wider distance between notes, and so I will do this. You see, this uh, three on the second string going to the three on the first string is a bit of a jump. In fact, I'm skipping the note in between, friend number five, which I'm actually gonna use to end the answer. So to sum up, you slide to five, then three, five, three, three, three on the first string and you end on five. All together, three and four and one. Again, three and four and one. Now let's put together question and answer. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, time to work on the third answer. Here I want to keep things simple as I did with the first answer. So I'm gonna choose two notes from the minor pentatonic. Let's say A, friend number five and C, friend number three, and that's it. So let's slide to the first five and then alternate between three and five. I ended on fret number five because it works better than ending on fret number three. Remember the A, fret number five, or the D, the root, are the best notes to end your leaks. So to sum up, you slide to five on the second string, then three, five, three, five. On the fives, I'm adding a bit of vibrato, by the way. All together, three and four and one. Again, three and four and one. Now let's put together question and answer. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, let's work on the fourth answer. For the final answer, I want to give a sense of closure. And so I want to end it following the scale, but going backwards. So something like this. But let's try to make it a bit more interesting. Let's start again with this little lick, which you've used before. And then let's repeat five and three. And then let's simply follow the scale going backwards. So five, three, five, and you end on the root, fret number two, D. Now let's try to give it a cool rhythm. And for this, I'm relying on the vibe of the track. And so let's try this. I like it again. So use light to five on the first string, then three, then five, three, five, then three and five with vibrato and you end with fret number two 
with vibrato as well. All together, three and four and one. Again, three and four and one. Now let's put together question and answer. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, so you might be wondering what you can do to make your answers groovy. Like I said before, rely on the track you're improvising on and also use your own experience and your own taste. By the way, your goal at this point is to get started with something, not to write the best solo in the world. The more you do it, the better it gets and then you can simply improvise. Bear in mind, this process will take a bit of time. So now I'm gonna play this entire eight major solo I came up with, having the backing track in the background. After that, you will have a chance to improvise with me. You'll see. But for now, get ready. You're about to practice this entire solo. Now I'm gonna be playing just a question for you and you can improvise the answers. You can work them out before or even try them on the spot if you feel brave enough. So to clarify, you will have a play along with the backing track and the question played by myself so that you can focus only on the answers. Remember, don't play over me. Having said that, let's go. The aim of this tutorial was to introduce you to improvisation. Of course, you're just scratching the surface here, as there is so much more to cover. Let me know in the comments if you would like to learn more about this topic. So, your homework for today is to work out some answers and then play them together with me. Once you've done this, try to come up with your own question as well, and perhaps with some more answers. On my Patreon page, you can find the tabs for the entire solo I taught you today. Moreover, you have the backing track where I played the question for you, and the one without it. Both of them are at three different tempos, so that you can improvise at a slower pace as well. By the way, for this 10 lesson series and in general for all my tutorials, you have the option of sending me your homework, whether it's a video or an audio file, and receiving some personalized feedback from me. That is if you join the Master Ukulele tier. Also, don't forget that if you learned something from this video and you would like to say thank you, you can buy me a coffee, link in the description. That's all for now. Let me know in the comments if everything is clear. And don't forget to download my free ASTAC roadmap, link in the description, that will tell you the exact process of follow to learn the ukulele. And that will also support your learning in this 10 video series. Moreover, check out the other links in the description to learn more about the types of classes that I've got available at the moment. And of course, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my new tutorials. Having said that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week with the last lesson of this YouTube course. Ciao!